Now we're going. Um, so, yeah, Jesus was born once and died once and rose again. So, the point is, someday, we don't know when, Jesus will come back. The idea is, he comes back and we go to heaven. It's done. All done. Go to heaven. So, so Tom said, we weren't there for this one. Let's make sure we are there for this one. Let's be a part of it. Make sense? So, let me. No. Yeah. So he read. My sorry, did you hear the He used a phrase today. He talked about something sinking in. If it sinks in. Have you heard that before? Let it sink in. Physically, yes. But in us, if Uliana said to me, she's pregnant, I would be shocked. And I would need some time to let that sink in. To go, okay, 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 everything's okay, she's pregnant. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. So you need time for it to become real. Well, that's when you let something sink in. So when the disciples first saw Jesus after he rose, they were shocked, freaked out. And then they let it sink in. And then they went and on the move, they went to tell people about Jesus. Make sense? And then... There's a man, he might be dead now, but his name was Chuck Colson. And he was involved in the US government. And there was a scandal. Do we know scandal? Hang on, I'll write it. Hold on. Um, this is the name. This means a tricky, sneaky action made to fool people. Make sense? There were 12 government guys, including Chuck Colson, who participated in Watergate. The police found out 12 of them were arrested and put in jail. Make sense? Put in the slammer. <laughs> and um, he, so he said, Tom told us what he thought. He, in, j in jail, he found Jesus and became a Christian. And he started a ministry in the jail. He was telling other prisoners about Jesus. And he said, he said, I know that Jesus was born, died, and rose again. Because the 12 guys who did this, they had to lie, right? They had to tell things that were not true. They couldn't do it for three weeks. In three weeks, they got all messed up and they got arrested. Make sense? But the disciples, if Jesus didn't rise again, they were lying, right? If he didn't, the disciples are lying. But they told people about this 40 years. So Chuck Colson said, you can't lie for 40 years with no mistakes. Make sense? They couldn't for three weeks, and now the disciples for 40 years are telling people Jesus rose again. The other thing was, the 
disciples who saw it, they were beaten, deleted. They were put in jail. They were killed. One of them, so you know how Jesus died on a cross? One of the disciples was killed on a cross upside down. Terrible. Like, just terrible. And you wouldn't do that if you were lying. Does that make sense? If they didn't see Jesus rise again, if they didn't believe it, they would not go through this. They would tell the truth. Does that make sense? Linda? Make sense? Really? Yeah? Good? So, if I, if somebody shot Juliana and I didn't do it, but I said I did it, so now I'm going to jail, why would I say I did it if I have to go to jail now? I would never do that, right? I would say I didn't, I didn't do it. Why would the disciples say, I saw Jesus come back if they knew they were going to die for it? They wouldn't do it. Make sense? And lots of people, more than the 12, were beaten and killed. He said something else. Mm. I'll write this down so you can read it. Um, touch my hands and touch my side and Thomas did 
And then he said, oh my gosh, like, you're amazing. I, I worship you. You know, then he believed. And, he's, and Jesus said, Jesus said, okay, you believe because you saw, right? You saw. He said, how much better, how more, how more amazing for the people who believe, who don't see, like us, right? We don't, we don't see Jesus' hands and feet. We don't see his side, but we believe anyway. And he says, those people will be so happy, will be so blessed, will be so grateful and rewarded because they believed without seeing. Make sense? And so his message to Thomas, what he said to Thomas was, and it's for us too, is stop doubting and believe. Just stop. Stop doubting and believe. And let me just look here. And Pastor Tom said this to New Hope. He said, blessed are you at New Hope who have not seen, but you believe. So he turned it to us and said, we are blessed if we believe and we haven't seen. Yes? Yes. We're good. Um, oh yeah. There's a beautiful verse that he read in John that says a lot of miracles do we know miracles do you, do you know miracles helen yeah a lot of miracles we've, we've written down a lot of miracles in the bible and the reason why jesus says is so that you believe that's why he wrote them down and there's a beautiful verse that says but you know what? If all of the miracles that Jesus did were written down, there's no way we can make a book. That's too big. There'd be so many miracles you can't count them. Make sense? So, so then he talked about when Jesus will come back. And the big message was be ready. Be ready. And he talked about how, like in the Bible, there will be signs, there will be earthquakes and wars and famine. I can't remember everything he said. Christian teachers who lie. Um, or earthquake taken to court put in jail, killed Christians Christians will be hated that is very true today it's growing the hate to Christians now right um, so he says be ready but he also said but you don't know when Jesus will come. He doesn't tell us when. So he so he read a bunch of little stories to tell us what it means to get ready. And I will tell you a few of them. So to be ready is to do what God wants you to do right now. Love people, help people, tell people about Jesus. Give your time, give your energy, give your money, give what, like, help people. And that's what we are supposed to be doing. That is how we stay ready, you know? So he gave a few examples. First of all, do you know thief or robber? Hold on. So there's 
They have the same thing. Feet or this is someone who steals, mm -hmm. takes something from you that he shouldn't, right? If this was our house and you told me that a thief was coming at two this afternoon, I would be ready. <laughs> I would call my friend. I'd get my frying pan to hit him, <laughs> and I would be ready. But we don't know when the robber, Jesus is not a robber, but what they're saying is, but you need to be ready all the time. Have a security system. Lock the doors. Um, know how to protect. Like, just be ready whenever it happens. And then he told a story about ten... I don't even know this word. Ten bridesmaids. Do you know bridesmaids? If I'm getting married, I have three women with me. Those are my bridesmaids. The man has groomsmen, but we have bridesmaids, okay? So there is a story about ten. And in the Bible time, they needed a lamp. And the only way the lamp worked was with oil. You needed oil. And so they knew the groom was coming soon, but they didn't know when. Five of them went and got oil, and they made sure they had enough oil. If they used some today, they go and get it. They did the hard work of always having enough oil. Five of them were lazy, didn't want to do the hard work, so they didn't make sure that they always had enough oil. So then they're sleeping in the night, and the groom comes. They hear the groom is coming, and they want to go to the party. So the five who did the work, they grab their lamps and turn them on, and they go to the, find the groom. And the other five say, oh, we don't have oil. Give us some of your oil. Give us some of it. And the other five say, we can't. What, what if we run out, right? What if we finish our oil? We need all of our oil. You need to quickly try and find oil and come. And by the time they found oil and came back, the groom and the bridesmaids were gone. The party moved on. So the five were not ready. And what's hard is to be ready is work, it takes action. They had to go and fill up their oil every day. Then he told a story about talents. This is like money, but in the Bible they called it talents. I don't know why. So, if I'm the owner of this house, but I'm going away on a long vacation, so I give Helen $10, I give Carlos 5 I cannot remember Karen. 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 I give Karen 2 So 10 5 and 2 And I say, take care of everything, watch my money, like, do what I would do with my money. And I go away. And Helen takes it and invests. Do you know invest? Do you know invest? Yeah. Can someone tell her? Can you tell her in Mandarin? <laughs> <laughs> so invested and took some risk. Do we know the word risk? Is you do something that could go really good, or it could go really bad, but you're hoping it goes good. So, 10, you go and invest it. Five, you do the same thing, you go and invest it. So both of these guys are out there trying to make more money. But then Karen is lazy. <laughs> and so she doesn't want to risk and she's kind of mad at me, the house owner. She says, 
She wants me to do her money and make her money and I get nothing. Like you're just kind of mad. So she's smart. She is smart. <laughs> she is smart. And so she says, forget it. So she digs a hole, puts her two dollars in there, and covers up. <laughs> so now I come back home. And I call you three in. And I say, come, like, show me what you did with what I gave you. Because remember, it was my money in the first place. You didn't have anything. It was a gift to you to do something with. And so what did you do with the opportunity I gave you? I gave you an opportunity. And she tells me I did amazing. And I go, that's awesome. Now I'm going to give you blah, 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 reward. Then you come and you did awesome. And I go, amazing. You get blah, 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 blah. I reward them, right? These two. Then Karen comes and says, well, you know what? I thought you were a bit of a jerk. Do we know jerk? Idiot. Yeah. And I don't like you. And I was scared of you. So I didn't want to risk, so I buried it in the ground. So here you go, here's your two dollars. And the master, me, is upset and says, you had an opportunity to do something great. You had an opportunity to be rewarded. We could have worked as a team. I gave you an opportunity and you didn't do anything with it. You didn't want me, you didn't want my money, and you did nothing. So now, you're up. So when you are to be ready for God, means to take risks too. Because being a Christian is not easy, right? Um, we've talked about China, um, I think Russia as well, I think, but China for sure very dangerous to be a Christian and there are lots of places and now we've talked even here now it is dangerous we've said Pastor Tom could get arrested for some things that he talks about it's scary and it's even risky because some people won't like you some people will think you're a jerk or you're crazy or what, you know what I mean? Like, um, in Niagara on the Lake, do we know Niagara on the Lake? Mm -hmm. There's a library, and the head librarian, I don't know if she's a Christian, but she stands for a lot of the things that Christians stand for. And in February, in the US, she was interviewed by a very small, paper of some kind and she said being a librarian is very difficult now because they only put certain books in the library that talk about this opinion you can't have books that talk about the other opinion so she says it's very difficult she came home and got fired lost her job last week that's an example where if you try to speak, it's risky now. There's just so many things with the government telling you what you can believe and what you cannot. So the problem is it's risky to be a Christian. And so to be ready means to do the work God wants you to do to be ready, which includes taking risks right and then there was one last story kind of just refresh my memory of it um sheep and the goats we know the sheep and the goats uh <clears throat> oh man where are the sheep and the goats okay he says okay so he says jesus says heaven is like sheep and goats you know sheep and goats they are different mm -hmm. but very similar mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
when, when the end comes and Jesus comes back, he will separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep are the people who have believed and are ready. The goats are the ones who weren't. And to the sheep, he says, you guys did amazing. He said, when you saw someone sick, you fed, you helped them. When you saw someone hungry, you gave them food. When someone was in jail, you went and you visited. All these things. And they said, what? They said, when, when the heck did we do that? And Jesus said, every time you did it to anybody, even somebody that nobody likes or cares about, you did it for me. Same thing. You loved them, that means you love me. So now, let's go party. You get a big reward. Let's go to heaven together. And then he says to the goats, you guys are not so awesome because you didn't feed me when I was hungry. You didn't come visit me in jail. You didn't help me when I was sick. You did none of these things. And they said, what? When did we see you in jail? When did we see you sick? When did we see you hungry? And Jesus says, anybody that you didn't help, any little old person, that was me that you didn't help. Because every person is made by God. Every person is loved by God. So he wants us to love everybody. So every time you choose not to, you chose not to love God. And there, you go to hell. I always feel bad saying that, but you go to hell. And so what Tom said is, there is a risk, there is a lot to think about. Because it's heaven or hell. Eternity with God or not. So it is something serious to think about. And then he told the story about Peter. Peter, when Jesus met him, he was a fisherman. And, and Jesus said, no, no, you come, you come follow me. We will fish for people. Like we'll get people to God. Then Jesus died. Peter was a little bit lost, didn't know what to do. So he's like, I'm going to go back to fishing. So he goes back to fishing. <laughs> and Jesus rose again. And so Jesus sees them fishing and he comes to them on the water and he says, they don't know it's him. And they say, he says, what do you got? What are you doing? Peter says, I'm fishing. And it's like, oh, Peter, you went back to your old ways, right? You forgot what God called you to. You went back to fishing. And they're not catching anything. So Jesus says, you're doing it wrong. Throw your net on the other side, not this side, put it over there. So they did, and the net was so full of fish, they couldn't pull it in. So full. Peter went, ding, that's Jesus. And he went running to Jesus and came back to the life Jesus had called him to. And he said, do you love me? Then take care of my people. Love my people. I'm going to heaven now. <laughs> now you are my hands. You are my feet. You are my words. You are what I would do. So do what I would do. Make sense? And that is the life we are all called to. We are called to a good life of loving people. Everybody is broken. I am broken. And you guys are broken. And other people, everybody is suffering. Everybody needs to know that there is love and there is hope and there is peace. This is not everything. There is more. Make sense? We're too fast. We're good. Um, hang on. Okay. Oh, there's the sheep and the goats. Um, <laughs> because if you remember too, Jesus said he came to serve. Other kings, they sit on their throne and they say, Helen, 
get me a sandwich. <laughs> Linda, I'd like some wine. <laughs> Uliana, clean my house. They tell people what to do and they sit on their throne. And Jesus came and said, no, I'm not a king who sits on the throne. I'll go get the sandwich for you. I'll go get the wine for you. I'll clean your house. I'll do it for you. And he says, if I can do it, and I'm God's son, you guys should do it. Love people, serve people. Make sense? And so he had... Okay, so he said, here's the practical part. Um, how do we get ready? How do we stay ready? His number one thing, in fact, I think it was the only thing. Yeah, his number one thing was, oops, that's a terrible G. Get on a schedule. I will explain, but do we all know schedule? Do we know what it means to get on a schedule? To get on a schedule means to sign up and commit to a schedule. So I am on a workout schedule. I wait on Monday, cardio Tuesday, weights Wednesday, cardio da da, da and day off on this, and blah. I am on a workout schedule. You are all on work schedules, school schedules. Everybody is on a schedule. Make sense? He says, get on a serving schedule. Sign up, figure it out. And he said, just go down there. He said, they will not be shy. They will not be quiet about asking you to help. And they aren't. My first day here, whew, wanted you to get involved. I appreciate it because it pushes me and my faith. So he says, if you're coming to church here and then you don't come for a few weeks and then you come and then you don't come, that's called hit or miss. Have you heard that before? That's a really common hit or miss. Doubting? No, it means sometimes it happens or we do it. And sometimes we don't. It's not consistent. Right? And he said, hit or miss never works. If I do a hit or miss diet, nothing's going to change. If I, he gave another really good example. Oh, budgeting. If you do, if you live a hit or miss budget, your money will be out of control. Because you need to be consistent and stick to the budget. Make sense? Diet, you need to do the diet every day. Not hit or miss, always hit. Make sense? And so he says, same with church. You can't do church hit or miss. You must always hit church. Get consistent with church. And here they would say things like, Get consistent with a life group. I don't know if you guys are in a life group, but get consistent in a life group. That's huge. Get consistent, find what you like and help. I do not like children, other people's children. So I do not help with children. I help in other areas, but you might love children. So Sign up and serve, you know, or cooking, or cleaning, or worship, or something. Find what's you, who you are, and get going. 
start helping the church do church, right? And because people serve us every Sunday, Tom serves us every Sunday, the band every Sunday, the Sunday school teachers, they're helping. They make it possible for us. But you are serving everyone. Oh, that too. <laughs> so now you do something for someone else. Make sense? That's how it works. And he said, because the one thing Jesus told us to do after, he said, go and make disciples. So, you know, Jesus had his 12 disciples, 12 people who were with him and learned and became like him. Go make more of those. And what is disciples? Disciples are disciplined. You know, discipline? Discipline. Stick to a schedule, not hit or miss. Um, my one workout trainer says, if you don't feel like working out, just be disciplined. So you might not feel like it, but get out into the gym and do it anyway. That's disciplined. Doing it when you don't want to, right? And we all have times where we don't want to. Um, and he just said, by getting on a schedule for serving, it will change you, it'll change your family, it'll change your neighborhood, your city, blah, blah, blah. It spreads, it changes people. There was some man, there's a couple in our church, and I don't know where they live, but their neighbor, who they don't really know, but he watches their life, and his life is very bad right now. And about a month ago, he crossed the street and went to his neighbors and knocked on their door and started crying and said he needed something. He needed what they had. And so he started coming to church and he's bringing his kids and he's seeking um, counseling, you know, and life. That's what can happen if we live. You never know what neighbor is watching and will come over and say, hey, I need what you have. I can't, I can't do it this way. Make sense? Um, I'm going to wrap this up because we kept going on, but he was kind of repetitive. Um, Overall, he said, we are working together with God. If you've said yes to Jesus, his Holy Spirit lives in you. And now the two of you go out and serve him. He'll give you strength. He'll give you hope and joy. He'll give you the ideas. It says the Holy Spirit reminds you, hey, this is what you should do. Or this is, this is who God is. Don't forget. That's why we want. So go do it now together. And his final thing was, he said, this Easter, would you come to Jesus? Would you receive his forgiveness and grace? Will you let the Holy Spirit take over and now live in service? And he said, live the life you were created to live. You were made to live this. So will we accept that call? Will we say, yes, I'm going to do it. I, I'm with you, Jesus. I'm with you. Make sense? This might sound silly, but I, I thought about it this morning, and I feel like, does anybody want prayer to do that? No pressure. But I will absolutely pray with you. If you want to make that decision, no problem. I won't make you say anything right now. But just know that I'm there. And I want to help you guys understand and whatever. But that's the big lesson today. Is Jesus will come back. Stop doubting and believe. Be ready. There's one more. Oh, get on the schedule. Okay? Make sense? Any questions? <laughs> Not good. Two. Like two. two. Okay. Yeah. The first is the Joshua. Oh yes, I forgot to tell you. Yeah. 
I think it's in Hebrew okay. or Arabic or something. That's Jesus' name. Oh, okay. So okay. in Bible times, they would have said Yeshua. Yeah. So then they wrote a song using his name in the Bible way. Make sense? Yeah. What was the other one? Oh, the other is, is uh, I'm not sure. It's not like a question. It's like a when, how do we know when Jesus is here? Because it's quite tricky or hard to think that, for example, the king, like the person of Russia, yes. they name himself like a, the, yeah. like the king or something like that. And I'm, not, I'm just thinking when the day comes, when someone will just, you know, show that's an awesome question. Um, two things. One is Tom warned about Christian teachers who will lie. Mm -hmm. They will take the Bible and they'll use it a little bit and then they'll twist it and they'll change it. <sighs> Only in the last couple years have I learned this. This is why we need to read the Bible. This is why we need to know who Jesus is and who God is. That way, if you come to me and tell me Jesus is blah, 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 I can go, no, 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 no. That's not the Jesus I know. Because the church I was at before New Hope, it's now a mess and they were telling lies. And I kept thinking, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's, but I didn't know my Bible very well. And at the beginning of COVID, I was like, oh, I'm so tired of not knowing who is lying. Who, what is true? Who is God? I didn't know who he was. So I said, screw it. I'm going to start with Matthew, like the Gospels. Remember we talked about the Gospels, the four stories of Jesus. I'm just going to read them. And I'm just going to write down what I notice about Jesus. Because Jesus says, if you see me, you see God. So, Je <laughs> Jesus, Jesus fed people. Jesus said, I don't want them to go away because they might fall. They might be so hungry that they fall. They, that's very caring. Jesus is very caring. Jesus went to the prostitutes. The, the big, big sinners. That's who he hung out with. He didn't hang out with the popular or the wealthy unless they wanted to be more like him, right? So, number one, you need to know your Jesus so no one can trick you. Putin has tricked people. And they don't have the ability they don't know what the rest of the world knows. Russian people. Russian people can't have access. So all they know is Putin. So no question, they're going to believe him, right? If only they could hear what the rest of the world hears, they would know better. The other thing is specifically, when Jesus comes back, he says, you won't miss it. You can't miss it. It'll be so obvious. No problems. But there are lots of people who come and say they are God's preacher or God's teacher or I'm sent from God to do blah, 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 blah. You gotta know this. There's actually a lot of documentaries on Netflix about famous situations where people claimed to be God's speakers and they ended up confined on this property and they ended up dead and that's where the leader led them. Um, do you guys know what Kool-Aid is? Kool-Aid is like the name of a juice. We used to drink it when we were kids. They literally poisoned Kool-Aid and said it's time to go meet God. Drink it. Babies, everybody and they all died but does that sound like jesus would jesus ever tell you to do something like that jesus was like the most loving thing you've ever known 
So, know this. This will be really obvious. You don't even have to worry about it. Okay. He'll make sure you know. So this is not a problem. But this is. Like the teachers is a big problem. And a lot of churches are suffering now. Because they don't want people to hate them. So they're changing the Bible so less people hate them. People hated Jesus. Why why are we different? If 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 Jesus had Instagram, he would not have very many followers. <laughs> Cause he doesn't say things that just everybody likes. Make sense? Okay. Um, any other questions? Is that okay today? Um, ooh, two minutes. <laughs> Can I pray quickly before we go? Okay, good. Um, Jesus, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for Tom's sermon, for the music. Thank you that there's a good reason to live. There's a good reason to have hope. Even in the worst of situations, there is a good God doing good things. Even though Satan is trying to do bad things. Thank you that we have a good God and help us to believe it. Help us to live a life of service, to be ready to put you at the center of our life. And thank you so much again for this class today, for these people, for these questions, for the relationships and the friendships. Just thank you so much even for these gifts today. And thank you that you rose again, that we have a reason to celebrate today. Thank you for that. Amen.